All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today I'm going to show you how to hook up your Xbox controller or your Xbox 360 controller. I'm currently using an Xbox One controller to your Windows PC and use the built in drivers inside of Steam in order to get the most utility out of your controller. Although, for the most part, a lot of the drivers that are handling the Xbox controller come with Windows 10. For the most part, we're just enabling support inside of Steam to make sure everything works the best. So first up, make sure your controller is either plugged in or connected with the Wi-Fi adapter that you can buy for the Xbox controller. And then open up Steam, and then up in the upper left corner, hit the Steam title, and then go to settings. Inside of here, we wanna go down to the bottom to controller, and we wanna start out with going to the general controller settings button. This is going to open up a little Steam big picture window. And what we want to do here is we want to make sure that Xbox configuration support is enabled. And if you have one of those fancy Xbox controllers that has extra features, you can make use of them by enabling Xbox extended feature support. Just note that the extended feature support is going to ask you to restart Steam, so it might take you a second. I don't have one of these, so I can't really walk you through that. And then you can also enable some other controllers, like it supports PlayStation. It supports the Switch and also generic gamepad support for just like unbranded controllers. And then if everything works out all right, it should detect your controller down here at the bottom. And if not, you might have to plug and unplug it real quick. This should support all your Xbox 360 controllers and all your Xbox One controllers. If you're buying it from a weird secondary brand, I can't promise anything. And if this all works correctly, look, we can move around with the controller. It even says back by hitting the B button. And so after that, there's a couple other configurations that might be interesting to you. Um, desktop configuration, which lets you use your controller to move your mouse around and control stuff on your desktop. Big picture mode configuration, which is the, the controls for using your controller in big picture mode. And then if you want to mess with it, there's also the guide button cord configuration. I don't really mess with that. The defaults work pretty well. Well, let's just pop into desktop configuration. So depending on who you are, I'm clearly one of them. Uh, some people who set this up might see a blank setup. That's fine. Don't freak out. You don't have to set this up manually. Steam actually has this browse configuration button at the bottom of this window that allows you to enable the default configuration and other people, depending on like you can set up game specific controls in here. They sometimes have templates made by the community and other people that allow you to kind of have like a better starting point that you can then configure from there. But we just want to use the default configuration and we'll hit OK. And this allows me to do things like move stuff around with the joystick. I'm using the left joystick right now. You can also use the direction pad, all that good stuff. And when we're done, I can just hit B to go back. And then big picture mode is much the same. It'll gives you controls for controlling big picture mode. And these little tabs at the top are just different things that you can set up control groups for, like using the web browser, changing or, you know, messing with your mouse on screen keyboard, yada, yada. If you want to change any of these or they're not filled out, you can go to browse configs and add the default configuration setup, which I think is fine, but it gives you a good starting point. And if you want to rebind any of these at any point, you can just hover over the one you want to change, click it, and either using these pull downs, change what it does, or rebind it given some different options. Or some of these even give you the option to, you know, rebind a key directly on the keyboard using like a big visual map of the keyboard and mouse. So it's pretty easy to rebind stuff to pretty much any button configuration on your computer. And once that's done, I mean, the second this is plugged in and it shows up in general controller settings, you're good to go. You can just go play games, whatever you want. And in fact, this should be on by default, most of this. So just plug in your Xbox controller and then go game. You're good to go. Do the thing. Um, if for whatever reason you find a game doesn't properly use the Xbox controller and you want to try using Steam's drivers to try to force it to, you can go down here to add a game and you can add games that aren't attached to Steam. And then Steam will just be the launcher 
and then it'll allow you to use drivers from Steam in that game. So you just go down to the lower left-hand corner of your Steam library, go to add a game, add a non-Steam game, and you just select it from this big long list of games, add it, and then you launch it from here. Uh, that's not really foolproof. In fact, it's quite buggy to do that, but it's sometimes worth a try. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, throw those in the comment section below. Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe, and bye, everybody.